So looking at quite small area now, imperfect markets, and we've actually already covered some of these things in previous videos, but um, this is a nice quote from Jane Austen's book, Emma, uh, but it doesn't really relate um, to economics. Um, it's, you know, these imperfections in love are all great, but in economics, they can, they can actually cause us problems and uh, market failure as well. So imperfect information is when consumers and producers don't possess or ignore the relevant information information and uh, you can probably relate this back to merit goods and demerit goods because we've spoken about that they're either going to over consume because they just don't have the all the information that the item is bad for them or or they're ignoring it for some reason or they under consume and this is the case with merit goods when they don't fully realize the positive effects that it can have so they don't fully realize the um, private benefits or maybe um, they don't consume as much as they should do or they over consume because they're not taking into account these external benefits and external costs that could occur to third parties. So your negative externalities, your positive externalities. Usually in consumption, we're, we're kind of thinking about these things, but we could be thinking about them in production as well, because it, imperfect information does relate to producers as well. We mainly focus on it um, at the year one or AS level on consumers, though, but there are lots of um, interesting things to look at with producers. So why does this occur? Well, various reasons. So maybe consumers or producers are just not aware of the, the benefits of their actions or the harmful effects, either to themselves or to others. Um, over the last 100, 200 years, we've had a lot of scientific discovery. Um, but before that, people maybe made poor decisions or poor choices, not because they were deliberately doing it, just because they didn't really know the harmful effects. So thinking about smoking, thinking about the use of asbestos in construction and all of those types of things. Um, you can be myopic, which means short-sighted. Um, so there is there are studies done that show that people often um, overvalue the benefits if the benefits are immediate and they undervalue the costs if the costs are going to be in the future so this relates to revision this is important because the um the the benefits are actually going to be um in the future you know in august when you get your results whereas the costs are now if you have to stay in i mean i'm recording this it's a lovely sunny day outside it's really warm and you know it feels hard to come in and do some work um and, and lots of people won't lots of people you know i always think the exams are a really bad time to do exams in the, the summer months because lots of people will actually think oh well you know i want to go outside and i want to enjoy the the sunny weather so they're thinking about the benefits that they can get now and they're not thinking about the tears that might be coming in august or middle of august when they get the results and it's not quite as good as a uh, as it is so maybe they're over consuming the sunny weather at the moment and they're under consuming um revision and textbook pages and reading um, it can be because of overly persuasive advertising and this is why there's lots of rules and regulations relating to advertising especially with the advertising to children and it's really interesting going on to the advertising standards um, authorities um, website and looking at the rules um, advertising to children and one of the rules is that you can't make it seem that um, a product a toy usually when it's advertising to children will make that child more popular with their friends because that would be very persuasive to a child and they might not understand that um, that's not necessarily going to happen um, so it's fascinating look at the advertising the ASA's website inaccurate information as well um, just mistruths and we'll have a look at those um, in a second and asymmetric information I love that word asymmetric asymmetric meaning more one-sided so not symmetrical one-sided so where one side knows more than the other side so usually it's the producer that's selling that knows more than the consumer or the buyer um, but sometimes it can be actually the um, consumer or the buyer that knows more than the producer and this occurs in the market for insurance healthcare insurance as well or health insurance so you know yourself if you're um, unhealthy but you do know as well that maybe being honest about how unhealthy you are to an insurer is going to put up that premium. So there's a bit of an incentive um, to lie. That would be illegal, I just need to point out, lying for insurance, but um, you can see why there are incentives for some people to, to be dishonest.
So this was an advert that got in trouble a few years ago, um, this vitamin water, um, because on the advert you can see it says delicious and nutritious, so they got into trouble for that because it actually contains a lot of sugar, so much sugar actually, that uh, the Advertising Standards um, Authority um, got involved um, and said that you can't possibly say that this is nutritious or, well, you're allowed to say it's delicious but not nutritious because it's a both kind of recommended amounts and, and limits. Here, um, George Akerlof, I think it's how you pronounce his name, a very, very famous economist, um, and definitely very accessible as well. I'd read some of his work, I'd watch some of his videos, he's got a few videos on YouTube. Um, and he wrote a very famous paper in the 70s, I think, about the market for lemons. And by lemons, he means secondhand cars and how um, the buyers have imperfect information. They don't really know whether they're, they're getting a good car or not, or not so a good car with the secondhand market. The seller probably knows what they have. And that this causes, causes lots of market distortions. Um, and what happens is the people that maybe do have are trying to sell, you know, the good quality secondhand cars hand cars um they get they're gonna not be offered a very good price for it because of all these like this misinformation this imperfect information because uh, people you know aren't going to pay a big price for something when there's a lot of uncertainty um and the, therefore that that means that the the market is reduced you have few um, a fewer a lesser quantity of kind of good products, uh, secondhand cars entering the market because the people that own those secondhand cars think, well, I'm not going to get a good price for it. Um, so that can be damaging to the market. Okay, so that's um, imperfect information. Then we've got monopolies. Now we've really been over monopolies in the other video, so I'm just going to go over this quickly. So this is P1, Q1. This is what a competitive market would look like and it'd be allocatively efficient. But what monopolies do because there's barriers to entry is they limit the output because what they, well, what any business, most businesses, when we study them in economics, certainly in the first year, we assume that their objective is profit maximization. Um, and so the monopoly um, is going to limit their output because the output to the left of the equilibrium quantity is usually where profit is going to be maximised. And this means that we're going to have a much higher price than in a competitive market and we're going to have a, a lower output. And we also get this triangle here is the lost producer uh, the producer surplus is here, by the way. Sorry, I just said a kind of producer when I was colouring in the consumer surplus part of it. So I didn't want you to get this kind of comes into the second year of the course, being able to know the difference between the two. Um, but that is the what we call the dead weight loss or welfare loss. Um, and it represents the monetary value of the uh, loss to the market because of this monopoly supplier. So here is, um, I won't go through this in depth because this is from a previous presentation that you can go over. Here are the kind of problems and the reasons why the monopolies can cause market failure but don't rem don't don't remember don't forget that there are actually benefits um, to monopolies that you might get as well um, and natural monopolies are something that are thought to be more efficient than the alternative which would be that a competitive market just wouldn't be able to um, cover their costs and finally, the immobility of factors. So it can be any of the factors of production, but, um, but usually when we're looking at this, we're looking at labour, the immobility of labour. So it's the inability of labour to move from one job to another. And there's lots and lots of reasons for this, but the two that are mentioned in the um, specification are geographical immobility, where workers find it difficult or impossible to move to jobs in other parts of the country, maybe because of travel, maybe because um, they're not fully aware of the job opportunities that are available in other parts of the country, maybe because of housing costs and those types of things, and then occupational immobility. So this is the difficulty of moving between one occupation to another occupation, and um, it's usually going to be kind of skills-based and experience-based, the reasons for that. And this, this is actually from the Daily Mail. I um, don't usually, usually put my sources, but I just thought it had quite a nice graphic. I typed immobility of labour into Google, and this is one of the graphics that came up. But it is from the Office of National Statistics. They've got all the numbers, so we can we can trust it in that sense. Um, but here we have. Um, the changes in the job market of the last year, I don't actually know which date this was taken from, um, but I assume it's um, sometime during the, the, the 
economic slump, the recession of the last few years. But we can see that um, these tertiary sector jobs uh, are down and we've got um, uh, we've got an increase in uh, the public sector there, but lots and lots of industries down. And if you're if you're trained in construction, it might be hard to then move into where we've got increases. Um, so education, health, and public admin. These are these are jobs that require specific skills and specific um, experiences. As is construction, but the people that are working in construction are trained with different skills. So it's hard for them to move from one industry to another industry. And here we have um, unemployment by region. And so we can see kind of ge geographical immobility of labour um, for various reasons, because living in these areas and the West Midlands really um, unemployment over the last uh, the last few years. Oh, we can see here the dates are here. So it's, it's looking, you know, in the, the kind of the the onset of the recession here and when it was getting really difficult for people but here we have um relatively low unemployment in unemployment in these areas um but it's these these areas here also have you know some of the highest property prices as well so it can be very difficult for these people um from the west midlands to move into these areas and to know about all of those job opportunities as well so that's market imperfections